Cool. Yeah. So uh, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to do this. I'm trying to get used to giving presentations online. That's, I think, my fourth time. Um, so yeah. We will talk about Hanami 2.0, and it's the next generation Ruby application framework. So quick introduction. My name is Pietro Sonita. I am a software consultant and an open source hacker. And you can find my work on GitHub, um, which shouldn't be a surprise. Um, and if you want to learn more about me, you can check out my website. It's called solnik.codes. And today we will talk about Hanami. I will briefly explain um, basic ideas behind the project and tell you the, like the story behind the project, the goals. Uh, and also a big part of this talk uh, turned out to be Rome RB, um, which you will understand why later. Um, and eventually I will also give you a quick uh, status update because all of that is a work in progress. So Hanami was created by Luca Guidi, uh, and it actually goes back to 2012. Um, originally, this project was called Lotus, um, but it had to be renamed due to a conflict with another project that is called Lotus. Um, so it's actually a funny story because um, I remember that Luca got in touch with me uh, back in 2012 to ask me about my work on RomRB because um, he, he was interested in, um, in general, ORMs and working with databases in the context of uh, his um, framework. Uh, I'm not sure when Lotus was released for the first time. Uh, however, um, it's been a while, so it was kind of nuts for me to see that uh, it was 2012 when all of that started. Uh, so originally, the goals of the project uh, were to create a monolith first um, framework that is suitable for creating web applications um, quickly, just like in case of Rails, but at the same time to give you the ability to actually grow your application and maybe eventually split it into smaller pieces and maybe even extract certain pieces into separate services, which is something that uh, sometimes people do. Um, Another goal was to create a component-based um, framework, which means that uh, a framework should consist of separate components that can be used standalone um, without the need to like, use the whole setup. Um, and last but not least, performance. Uh, Hanami was always supposed to be very fast and very efficient. So these were like original goals. And today we're working on Hanami 2.0, and the original goals are actually the same. However, a couple of things uh, changed, or I should say we added a couple of uh, new things. The first thing is that Hanami 2.0 is actually becoming a, an application framework, not just web application framework, but in general, in general, a framework that you can use to build applications in Ruby, any applications. And the other goal is to have an architecture where an app can be sliced into pieces so that uh, you can have a couple of small apps within a single app, um, even though it's still the same code base. This is very similar to the original idea. Uh, however, we now have this new concept that is called slices. Uh, so this is kind of a new goal uh, to introduce this in Hanami 2.0. So long story short, Hanami 2.0 started, like the effort behind Hanami 2.0 started um, three years ago, actually. Um, we started talking uh, with um, Hanami um, core team members back in 2018 uh, about just collaborating and, and working together because we just realized that we want to have like the same thing eventually. Um, we've built a bunch of things, a bunch of different libraries, uh, a bunch of different tools, and at the end of the day, it turned out that, well, uh, we want the same thing, so let's just work together. Uh, it took a while to actually discuss everything and, and like really decide what exactly we want to do and how exactly we want Hanami 2.0 to look like to work. Uh, however, we've made it, so I don't remember when, but at some point we just started working on 
uh, the actual code and integrating all the libraries together so that we can have our uh, full stack uh, solution. Uh, so essentially Hanami 2.0 is a very close collaboration uh, between um, a bunch of people who have been working on DryRB, RomRB, and also Hanami, obviously. So long story short, this is how it happened. And here we are today. So I mentioned that Hanami 2.0 is an application framework. Uh, this is a really recent thing uh, because just a couple of months ago, we realized that with the, the type of setup that we have right now, it's just not just possible, but actually really reasonable to have Hanami as an application framework rather than just a web framework. And it makes a lot of sense when you think about it because even if we're, if, even if we're building a web application, chances are you're going to have certain pieces that are not really web specific. Um, for example, a background worker is not really web, right? It's, it's a part of our app that can be actually really complicated. Uh, and it's just doing a lot of stuff in the background. It's probably using some kind of a solution like Sidekick or something. Uh, so it's a standalone thing uh, that doesn't need all of the stuff that uh, is typically provided by a web framework. However, there's a big overlap whenever you are building, a, I mean, there can be a big overlap when you are building applications, um, regardless of the type of the application. And so a framework can actually provide you with a lot of, a lot of stuff that you can leverage to build applications really efficiently. Um, so Hanami 2.0 is going to be just that, uh, an application framework that gives you a lot of interesting and very useful tools so that you can build uh, your applications efficiently. So most common example web applications um, is going to be handled by a full stack solution, uh, which is essentially a bunch of gems. So we have the main Hanami gem, which is already um, published uh, as an alpha release. And the Hanami gem, um, it's essentially a core piece of functionality, which is kind of like an empty shell. The only thing that it provides is like, as, as, in, as, as in like a feature that it provides is the settings component. And the settings component um, is something like configuration in Rails, but better. Um, then you have a router, which is a Rack compatible router. And this is provided by a separate gem, which is called Hanami router. And then you have action component, which is a way of handling endpoints um, using separate objects. And this is provided by a gem called action, uh, action Hanami controller. However, we will probably rename it to Hanami action. And if you want to render some views like HTML or whatever, then you can use Hanami view, which is also a separate gem and it's just integrated with the rest of the system so that it's just easy to use it. And last but not least, we obviously have a common line interface gem, uh, again, a separate gem, um, which is a pretty popular solution, um, just like in case of Rails or other frameworks, um, a common line interface dedicated to a specific framework. Uh, so in case of Hanami, it's gonna provide like console, database tasks and generators, all this stuff, things that you are probably familiar with. And there's more, uh, there are gems like helpers and assets and mailer and probably some more. Um, and they will also be part of the full stack solution. However, I think these are like the most crucial uh, components. Now it's important to remember that Hanami itself, the gem itself, doesn't depend on all these other gems. Uh, it's just something that you can add to your own gem file and then things will just come together as one full stack solution. Uh, but there, there is no uh, hard dependency uh, on router or view or whatever. So Hanami itself is a very basic gem that is like a starting point to compose the entire full stack solution. So I will show you a bunch of very basic examples uh, of these individual components just to give you a, a, an idea how things look like. Um, like I mentioned, settings is the only actual feature, uh, like a public facing visible feature provided by the Hanami gem. Um, and literally today there was a pull request opened with 
this specific uh, implementation of settings, which is now just a class. Uh, and it allows you to define uh, settings for your application. And the big difference between what Hanami provides and other frameworks uh, in Ruby is that settings, um, settings are explicitly defined. So it's impossible for you to refer to a setting that is not defined. And they also are typed. Um, you can provide types that are actually pretty powerful, like they can curse values into other types or make certain checks, like apply certain constraints, check if, I don't know, if it's a real database URL or whatever. So this is a pretty useful feature because it's going to be impossible to put your application with settings that are broken for some reason, which can actually happen. So this is a first class concept in Hanami and is going to be provided by the main jam and it's gonna work out of the box. So the router is currently a block-based DSL. We will probably turn it into a class just like in case of settings. And the router is the right compatible router and it's got a bunch of typical helpers that you will probably know from other frameworks like get, pause, all the rest kind of helpers. Um, so this will be probably very familiar to a lot of people. The only thing which is new um, and probably doesn't exist in other places uh, is this called is this thing called slices. So slices, like I mentioned, is a way for you to split your application into smaller applications. And in the router, you are able to mount a given slice at a certain path, and then specific path will be handled by a specific slice in your uh, in your uh, application. So on top of that, we have actions. And actions are standalone objects that handle specific endpoints. Um, now, this is actually a pretty, for me at least, a pretty interesting topic because uh, I'm actually uh, a big fan of both approaches. So I sometimes like the approach that Rails has, which is one class with a bunch of methods that handle specific endpoints. But sometimes I prefer to have a single object that handles a specific endpoint. Um, so I like both approaches. However, I know that some people actually really like actions and it's like one of the reasons why people like to use Hanami because we have that. Uh, but I really wanna mention that actions are the preferable way, the default way, and the full stack solution. However, you can use other approaches if you want. Uh, after all, it's just a Rack application. So yeah, you can use even a proc if you want. So this specific example shows how you could like set um, body on a response. This is explicit, you can do it, but you don't have to. So if you want to render a view, like an HTML uh, page, then you could do this, which is also explicit. So we have access to the view object um, and you can pass in some context or, or some other values uh, that will be available in specific templates. Uh, however, this is an example uh, just to show you that there are underlying uh, objects available. But Hanami is also based on convention over configuration idea, uh, which comes from Rails, obviously. So this could be an empty class and it would still work because there's a lot of automation behind the scenes. So templates and layouts and view objects and all, all of that uh, can be uh, inferred automatically and handled automatically. So you will still be able to render views without actually writing code if there's like a basic uh, use case for that. And common line interface, uh, this is a work in progress. Um, it's got generators turned off because they are not finished. However, uh, we do have a console and we do have database tasks. Um, and one thing that I really like about um, this particular implementation is that um, it's very extendable. It's very easy to add your own uh, common classes and you have nice access to your entire application and everything is just easy to uh, reuse. Uh, so I just really like uh, adding commands rather than a rake task. That's my preference. Um, and it's also worth to mention that the generators will actually 
be able to generate entire application skeletons in different uh, configurations. So you will be able to generate a very basic uh, HANAMI setup with like literally just like one file and, and one uh, endpoint, endpoint handler. Uh, or you could use uh, a generator to create like a full blown multi uh, slice setup with uh, everything generated for you. So this will be very, very flexible and uh, pretty useful, I think. And obviously we'll have things like generating models and I don't know, some scaffolding for controllers and, and, and layouts and all this stuff. So common functionality will be there, we just need to do it. Um, so yeah. Now the big part, um, it's kind of an accident, but uh, um, I will talk a lot about, uh, about ROM specifically because the model part is, is actually a huge part of Hanami uh, and people who use Hanami before, uh, especially with the Hanami model, I know that um, there were a lot of issues with this because originally Hanami used um, first like its own um, model uh, implementation uh, using SQL, the gem, um, then it was refactored or rewritten actually to use ROM, um, but then ROM evolved way faster than Hanami uh, could evolve and eventually uh, a lot of features were missing and some people ended up just using ROM, some people just stopped using uh, Hanami model because of this, so we wanted to address this uh, in Hanami 2.0 and after a little bit of, of like experimentation with the existing Hanami model code base and also a lot of just, just discussions and considerations, um, it became pretty obvious that the simplest thing to do is to just improve ROM itself uh, to make it uh, a nice fit for Hanami in the context of a full stack solution um, and make it the model part of, of Hanami. Um, at the same time, it's, it's not to say that um, there's absolutely no place for Hanami model. Um, personally, I think that we will probably reintroduce Hanami model uh, in the future. There are certain features that are required, like when you have, um, especially when you have um, templates with like helpers and, and rendering forms, all this stuff, um, there's a lot of functionality that you may want to have that integrates with uh, with ROM. So probably this will be a good excuse to reintroduce Hanami model. But yeah, today we have ROM and if you are not familiar with ROM, I will give you a very quick introduction. Uh, so ROM RB uh, is a data mapping and persistence toolkit for Ruby. Uh, it's a big project, a very ambitious, ambitious project. Um, it's been around since like 2014, 15. Um, and it's been kind of on hold in terms of development, mostly in maintenance mode, just because nobody had enough time to, to really work on it. Uh, however, it's been working very well for a lot of people and uh, we're going to improve it a lot for Hanami. So, uh, ROMRB 6.0 will be used uh, in Hanami 2.0 as the default solution for uh, uh, working with the databases in general. Uh, and the big focus is on improving user experience. Um, I'm specifically looking at this from the point of view of um, a Hanami user who's not necessarily um, very experienced. Um, I know that a lot of people tried wrong in the past and they had serious trouble just getting started like just configuring it um even i had some issues configuring wrong so that's kind of weird but um it, it's definitely something that should be improved and i've known this for, for for years so i'm finally addressing this and it's going to be awesome if you aren't familiar with rom again very quick introduction um rom is a vastly different solution than other um, ORM-like libraries in Ruby. Uh, it doesn't implement um, active record pattern. It actually doesn't implement any ORM pattern. I still don't know what it implements. 
However, uh, we do have some concepts that are familiar uh, to people who use other ORMs. So the first one is repository. Um, it's essentially a layer to separate database concerns from your application layer. Uh, and it is like the recommended way um, um, for just using ROM in general. Um, then you have relations that are used alongside repositories. Repositories have access to relations and relations have access to your database. So you essentially have additional uh, abstraction if you compare it to active record where you just have active record the model and that's it. So here you have repositories and relations. You could think about it a little bit like the model in active record um, and then like instances uh, of, of the model, a little bit like that. So typically repositories just return data from your database or make changes in your database. Um, and this way you don't have this kind of tight coupling between certain details uh, that are really just related to the persistence uh, simply because you expose your own API to work with the data. So in this very basic example, uh, we have a method called all, which just returns all users and it does some sorting um, and no details are actually leaking to your application layer because you end up with very basic uh, struct objects. So that's a big advantage. Um, the next big thing behind ROM is support for mappers. Um, mappers are built in and they are actually used always, regardless of how you're using relations, there is a mapper under the hood, even if you're not using it explicitly. So mappers are now like generated automatically uh, and that's very, very convenient. However, there are situations where you want to use a custom mapper. So you have always um, this possibility to just define your own mappers and they can be anything. Uh, however, ROM will provide certain um, abstractions to make defining mappers simpler. Uh, one thing that I want to add is support for serializers because uh, I've been doing this manually for too long. So uh, in ROM 6, we will have certain uh, conveniences around defining mappers uh, that uh, I think will be useful. So in this example, we can like define a JSON serializer and do some um, key renaming. Uh, so then when you have your repository, you can just say map with JSON and it's going to be applied to the resulting data. Uh, so that's very, very, very convenient. And when it comes to like making changes in your database, we have change sets. Uh, if you've worked with um, Ecto from Elixir, um, it's kind of similar like in Ecto. Uh, however, it's a bit more like object oriented, obviously. So um, you can ask a relation for a change set and then you provide the type. Um, and you have the ability to like define your own change sets and provide some custom logic there. So it's essentially the way of making changes in your database, which actually comes with a bunch of nice uh, features. One of them is mapping. So um, like I mentioned, uh, we have mappers and mappers are using many places. Change sets are also using mappers. So here we can, for example, map the data before we actually uh, save it in the database. And that's very, very convenient because uh, chances are if you're building an app, um, you will have situations where the input data structure is not the same uh, data structure that you actually persist in your database. Uh, so it's one of those features that I always missed uh, in, when, when using active record and here it's just a first class feature. So it exists in ROM before 6.0 uh, and we are just expanding this functionality and just making it simpler to use in ROM 6. Like I mentioned, ROM is very different from active record and the objects that you are working with, the objects that are, that are loaded uh, from the database are just structs. Um, they are not coupled to your database. There are like no database connections um, stored within, within the struct. It's just a struct. It has attributes, which you don't have to define uh, because ROM can infer attributes based on information from relations. 
Uh, you can define them if you want, but you don't have to. Uh, it's kind of tedious, so we do that automatically, uh, which so far worked very, very well. So structs can be uh, defined explicitly, like in this example, and then configured uh, within repositories by providing a struct namespace. Uh, you can use many struct namespaces, you can use different struct types, um, even for the same relation, so it's very, very flexible. Uh, and it allows you to essentially encapsulate certain uh, pieces of logic within certain parts of your application, rather than to have like a single gigantic class with a lot of unrelated stuff. Uh, so it's just one of the tools that we have uh, to make it easy, um, make it easier at least uh, to encapsulate a more complex business logic. So uh, that was a very quick overview. Uh, and with that in mind, with ROM6, like I mentioned, we want to have an improved user experience. And one of, one of the big issues is the setup. So the setup of ROM will be improved. Um, it's almost done. I've been working on this quite recently. And one of the, one of the first improvements is to make structs um, like the first class component in ROM. What it means is that currently when you use structs in ROM, you have to deal with them manually. You have to like define them and then you have to like require the files and do all this stuff manually. So this will, this will go away um, It will be supported by the setup. Uh, and specifically in Hanami 2.0, this will be just completely automated. So using certain conventions, you will just add files to certain places and they will just work. Uh, so this is a really big improvement and it's going to uh, simplify uh, using ROM. Now, another big improvement, which is something that probably looks weird, is that uh, the classes that you define will actually work. And I understand how confusing this is if you've never used ROM. Uh, it's not easy for me to like quickly explain this, but long story short is that uh, in ROM, the class that you define is not actually the class that will be used at runtime because ROM generates classes dynamically based on the database queries. So you, you issue database queries using relations. So you can, for example, have users and select uh, only like three fields from the table. And for this specific unique set of attributes, you will have a dedicated, um, a dedicated struct class. So this is actually pretty sophisticated and it was challenging to, to like implement this feature, but we made it, so that's awesome. But it came with this downside that you define a class, but you actually cannot instantiate it because it's not the class that will be used. We're going to fix that. Uh, we figure out a way how to do it. So in ROM 6, the, the class that you define is the class that will be used for the canonical base uh, representation of, of a given relation. So that's cool. Now, on top of this, um, and that's a stretch goal, but I think we'll make it. Uh, on top of this, it's possible to have this idea of refined attribute types. Um, this is a concept that exists in other languages, and it essentially means that you can extend certain basic types like strings and integers and actually provide some additional uh, either behavior or just information uh, al along with them. And what it can do is that on top of this, you can build really interesting functionality. And like the very first thing that comes to my mind uh, is support for generating test data. So we have ROM factory, which is a jam, kind of like a factory bot, but for ROM. Uh, and it works pretty much in the same way as any other factory jam. So we just define factories. Uh, but one thing that always bothered me was that we have all the types, uh, even if you don't explicitly define them, we have them. It's an abstraction that we've had in ROM for, for quite a while. It's very powerful because it provides a lot of information. So we could just leverage that. So with ROM6, I would like to introduce this feature where you can just have data generators almost automatic, automatically available. Um, 
again, that's a stretch goal, but I think it's possible to at least introduce an API for like defining these types. And then you will be able to like write tests without actually defining a lot of factories, which is helpful. So just like in case, uh, just like in case of structs, we also want to have repositories of the first class component, uh, which is also just to simplify the setup process. So, so far in ROM, when you wanted to use repositories, again, you had to deal with them manually. So we had to uh, configure them manually. You had to make sure that they are instantiated with the right configuration. So it wasn't too hard, but it was just something that you had to do. So we are going to remove that uh, with Hanami 2.0. Again, just like in case of structs, this will be just completely automated. You will just add repositories in specific directories um, by some conventions um, and things will just work automatically. Now, both improvements in case of structs and repositories required a little bit of cleanup, um, but I just couldn't stop and eventually I just rebuilt the whole thing in the wrong core. And as a side effect of this uh, improvement, it turned out that it will be possible to have a really cool feature, uh, which is defining components in line. So one of, and it also goes back to like using ROM um, and just struggling with certain things um, because every time you wanted to use something more advanced, you had to like define a separate class and then configure it and then make sure that it's loaded and all this stuff. So even though you had a lot of really powerful, powerful functionality, you still had to do a little bit of just, just this tedious type of work. Uh, and sometimes it was just plain confusing and sometimes you, you would make some kind of a mistake, like misconfigure something, for example. Um, but also just the fact that you had a lot of classes, uh, a lot of files, obviously, that was just not a nice experience. So with the improvements in, in the setup, uh, in the setup uh, implementation, it turned out that it's going to be possible to define certain pieces of functionality pretty much anywhere. So in this example, you can have a repository and you can just define a serializer for JSON and you can actually do whatever you want there. Uh, you can define like other mappers and, and, and use them just within this class and it's just going to work. So this is a huge improvement and I'm sure that people who use ROM before probably like get a sense of, of uh, how, how nice this is. Uh, and here's another example very, very common example of, a, of an absurd uh, command, which is a database command that is that is uh, provided by the Postgres adapter. Uh, and previously, again, you would have to like define the class. And if you wanted to use an absurd command for more than one um, relation, you would have to define more than one class, which was just annoying. Uh, so now it will, be, it will be possible to just really streamline this whole process and, and just define things in line. So this will be an improvement and actually it, it, like the possibilities are just endless. So I'm really, really excited about this. Now, last but not least, and that's a funny story. Um, if you used data mapper before, which is uh, a Ruby ORM that I used to work on uh, like back in 2010, uh, data mapper had a feature uh, that, that was called Auto migrations. So the idea was to have um, a schema definition in Ruby written explicitly, and then have a tool that will actually look at the schema that you define, then look at the schema that you actually have in your database, and then just update your schema in your database. This was a really cool feature. The only problem was that it was kind of buggy and it was not easy to, to like implement it properly. Um, and the fun fact is that ROM had auto migrations implemented a couple of years ago, but we never actually made it like really visible. Um, I don't even know if it's documented, to be honest. However, we've had that feature for a while now, and I know that some people are using it. So with ROM 6, I really want to just make it visible that, yeah, we have this feature. Please check it out. Um, the nice thing about it is that you just define your schemas inside your relations. Uh, and you can have a much nicer development workflow 
um, because you can like create a branch for some kind of a feature and you can just define a schema. Let's say you like need a new table to add a new relation, you add a new table, here we have users. So you define attributes uh, and then you continue working on the feature and you realize that you need more attributes so you just add more attributes and then maybe you change your mind so you go back and you remove some attributes or you rename some attribute you just do a lot of you know back and forth with your with your with your schema which really is natural and it happens uh, so in this case rather than like creating uh, new uh, migration files or changing existing uh, migration files and resetting your database um, all over again you simply auto migrate and things just update uh, automatically. Now, once you are done with your feature, um, you can just generate the final migration file and add just that migration file once you're done. So, you know, it's a, a workflow that is similar, but not identical. And the way um, the way you can leverage this is, is just very, very useful. So yeah, we're gonna have that. And yeah, I forgot to switch the slide, but yeah. This will look more or less like like here. So yeah, um, that is going to be Hanami 2.0, and there's a lot of stuff. Uh, and again, the model part and ROM 6.0, it's 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 a huge part of this effort. Uh, I almost forgot about it to be honest, but yeah, I just got back working on ROM and just everything became clear in my head. So uh, this is exciting. Um, when it comes to the status and what's going on right now. So things are happening. Uh, and first and foremost, uh, there is still some work that is happening in non Hanami gems, obviously ROM, but also some other DryRB gems. For example, um, there are some improvements um, in dry configurable, which is used for the settings component. Um, there are some features that uh, we will have to add to things like dry container or dry types or some other things uh, we will see. So sometimes nothing is happening in some Hanami repositories, even though there is actually work happening in other places that is related to Hanami. Um, so yeah, if you like really want to uh, follow the development, then yeah, um, dry RB and ROM RB are also places where the work is happening. However, uh, we actually have more and more people joining the effort and helping us with uh, both impl uh, implementing certain features or just improving things uh, in terms of code uh, and also updating guides and documentation, uh, which is a huge effort. So um, yeah, we definitely need help with this. But yeah, this is a work in progress and guides and documentation is being updated. Um, and we are wrapping up the last alpha, um, which should be ready soon. Uh, and hopefully before the end of summer, uh, we will have the first beta version. Uh, one thing I should mention is that because Hanami 2.0 is built on top of other libraries, um, it's not really a framework that was built like from the ground up. Uh, in a way it was, but again, it's based heavily on other libraries and the other libraries um, have been around for you know years. So uh, one thing that kind of surprised me, even though this shouldn't be a surprise, but once I started using Hanami, um, like back in March, uh, I was just surprised that everything just works and I didn't really find any kind of issues. But then I was reminded like, uh, okay, yeah, it's, it's actually using a bunch of libraries that are kind of stable. So uh, no need to be surprised. So yeah, um, if you want to check out Hanami, um, then check it out. It's definitely not ready uh, for like production usage if you're not interested in actually helping with the development. But if you are interested, then for sure, check it out and try to build something real with it because it's a great way to get involved. Uh, for me, it's the best way, to be honest. When it comes to ROM 6.0, I, I really just started working on this, but the progress has been pretty good. So um, I think that um, the first alpha will be ready in the summer, which is like now. So yeah, maybe next month. Um, and it's, it's, it's a fun coincidence because Luca uh, 
updated our status website literally like three hours ago. Uh, we uh, finally uh, merged unstable branches, which uh, were the branches that we use for uh, Hanami 2.0 development. All the unstable branches have been merged into a master branch and the master branch got renamed to main branch. So that was kind of a big change across a bunch of repositories. So right now, all the Hanami repositories are using main branch and this is the branch where Hanami 2.0 development is going to happen starting today. So, I mean, it's going to continue starting from today. Uh, so yeah, as you can see uh, in, in, in the screenshot, um, mailer and validations and utils which are three gems that I haven't mentioned in this talk are marked as done. Uh, to, be, to be quite honest, I don't really, uh, I'm not really familiar with them. I haven't used them uh, except uh, validations that, that is based on dry validation. So I suspect it's just uh, updated to use the latest dry validation. Uh, however, um, the assets gem, which is definitely very important if you want to build uh anything web with with assets um it's just not not there yet and and we need to just rebuild it um and yeah command line interface just needs more work in terms of like generators and, and more commands and just some polishing here and there but it's it's a nice gem to work on so i, I think it's going to go pretty fast um and when it comes to the core hanami gem um it's pretty solid uh, so I suspect that, yeah, once the settings are ready, it's going to be um, just a matter of polishing certain things and, and, and making sure that um, it's, 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 it's pretty stable. Yeah, which is literally what I just explained. So uh, I probably forgot something, but uh, it's kind of funny because like your definition of done is probably different than my definition of done. Like I have a production Hanami 2.0 application running. So for me, it's done. Um, but yeah, it really depends on what people need. Um, one thing that is important to understand is, is that Hanami is like really, uh, really like component or oriented. So it's a framework that consists of different pieces. So even if something is missing, you can, most likely implement it yourself uh, if that's a reasonable thing for you to do. So yeah, it's something to just keep in mind. Yeah, and the last slide is like, <laughs> this is something like very like from coming from me. Uh, it's something that I'm personally very, very excited about. Um, so there are some things that I would love to see um, done at some point in the future uh, after 2.0 final is released. So one of the things is live view equivalent from Phoenix framework. Um, I'm really excited about this because I kind of stopped working on front end completely because I was just so overwhelmed uh, by the entire you know, ecosystem of all these uh, front end frameworks and, and whatnot. Uh, but like the idea of live view like is, is really nice. So. I would love to build at least a proof of concept for Hanami and see how we could achieve a similar functionality. Uh, then there's GraphQL, uh, which I'm finally using. So I have a great excuse to really look into it. And I've been actually doing this for the last like couple of weeks. And like the more I dig into it, the more I see similarities between GraphQL, like when it comes to its concepts and its design and how it can map to ROM RB design. Um, I hope I'm right, but if I'm right, then it should be really easy. I mean, easy, relatively easy to build a very powerful integration for uh, GraphQL uh, using ROM. So that's exciting. And something that is related to the uh, refined types with the uh, automatic data generators uh, is improved just development slash test environments. Um, it's also something I didn't have enough time to show you, but we actually have uh, in the application template uh, that you can use to try out Hanami 2. Uh, we actually have a pretty cool RSpec setup with 
uh, configurable support systems for individual spec groups. Uh, it's something we want to actually extract and, and just release as a standalone gem, completely like outside of uh, Hanami, um, Hanami ecosystem because it's reusable, you can use it anywhere. Uh, it's just a nice improvement over like the typical um, R spec setup. Uh, and the data generator aspect I think is really important and I was like just talking with, with Nikita uh, earlier today from, from Driver B team and Romar B team and he, he mentioned property-based testing, uh, which makes a lot of sense. So I think it's also something to explore. Uh, and async, uh, I want to use async as much as possible and, and see if it can be leveraged to, to actually like improve performance. Uh, and also there are a lot of things in many different places like ROM or even validations uh, where async code could be used. So that's something I would love to explore. But yeah, that's like, that's coming from me, just the type of stuff that I'm excited about and would love to look into. Um, but yeah, let's get uh, Hanami 2.0 done first. So if you are interested in like following the development, you can check out our website, um, check out obviously GitHub organization. Uh, like I mentioned, and it's really important to remember that Hanami consists of a bunch of other libraries outside of the Hanami organization. I'm mentioning this again because I know that some people just explicitly told me that they thought that Hanami is like no longer active, which was just the opposite because I was asked about it during the time when Tim was working a lot on Dry System, for example. Uh, specifically to support certain things in Hanami 2.0. So uh, a lot of people had this wrong impression, <clears throat> excuse me, that, uh, that Hanami is like not active. Uh, so yeah, something to keep in mind. And yeah, we are on Twitter um, posting some updates about new releases and some plans. So feel free to follow us to stay up to date. And yeah, thank you. It's kind of weird. I'm not seeing you. I don't hear anything. I hope you are all you are all still there. <laughs> so let me just turn it off. Uh, so guys, now you're welcome to ask your questions. I see that many questions we have in the chat. Uh, I'm not sure that you have answered all of them, but please read before answering because. Uh, some people wrote it just to us, so just we can say it. Sure. And uh, as well, guys, if you want to, if, if you don't want to type, you can push raise hand and then I'll uh, unmute your microphone. So how do you want to do it? Uh, should I start, like, where's the chat? Oh my God. Uh, chat, uh, so share screen and uh, before, before this button. Well, okay, I have the chat, but uh, it's a lot of stuff. Yeah, very, very, very a lot of questions. Yeah, well, okay, I'm gonna go just from the top. So the first question is from Alexei. Uh, do you have some built-in pagination mechanism? Uh, yeah. Yeah, there, there is a plugin for plug, uh, plugination, for pugin, pagination in ROM. Um, however, we don't have like view related stuff. Uh, so that's, that's missing. There, there, is a, um, there is a helpers uh, gem from Hanami. So I guess that would be a place uh, where such helpers could be included. Okay, so the next question is from Slava. Uh, and what about authentication and permissions slash authorization? Um, use whatever you want for now. But in the future, we'll most likely provide some, some, some kind of a built-in solution. Uh, which reminds me that I forgot to mention that the, the whole setup that I mentioned in, in ROMRB, um, one of 
the side effects of this refactoring is that external uh, gems or your own code will be able to provide um, other components for ROM itself. So for example, if you need uh, some kind of an integration for an authorization library uh, to fetch information, um, I don't know, like for Pandit or something, uh, then you will be able to do it with ROM 6. You kind of, it's kind of possible still, but not as, as, as simple as it's going to be in ROM 6. So that will help. But yeah, for like in the beginning, we will definitely not have a built-in authorization uh, solution for, for, for Hanami 2, unless somebody decides to build it like now. So maybe it will, it will happen. Okay, so um, the next question is from, I think, Adam. Uh, what about assets? Does Hanami work with uh, Webpack? Uh, I'm literally the worst person to talk about assets <laughs> because I haven't used them. Um, so we have, we have assets jam and it's not ready. Um, we definitely need help just rebuilding it for Hanami 2.0. Um, I suspect it's going to work with Webpack because, I mean, it's kind of a requirement, I, th I think. So, yeah, but right now I don't think anybody's working on, on, on assets. But yeah, we will, we will build it eventually. So the next question is from um, Ernest. Okay. Um, how can one start contributing to the development of, of Hanami? Um, I really, I really think the best way is to just, 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 just play with it and, and start using it, even for like a not real project. To just try it out, um, and and just see what kind of stuff could be improved from your point of view, and then like ping me or anybody from the core team, and then just offer help, and we can take it from there. Um, I, I'm to be honest. I'm not sure if if we have all the issues like properly marked as as help wanted. We also use Trello board to track like high level overview of Hanami 2.0 development. So and it's public, so um, that could be also a starting point. And yeah, uh, definitely we need help with documentation and guides. So that that's also a great way to help uh, and contribute. So the next question is from Anton. Um, what would be an effort uh, from RB? Is there a comparison published somewhere? Uh, comparison uh, of migration from row five to six. Okay, yeah. So what's the effort uh, to migrate? No, no effort, it should work. Uh, I, I'm not uh, breaking any APIs and if I break something, that's going to be a bug and I want to fix it. So no effort, like that's the goal, no effort. It should just work. So the next question is from Vladislav. Um, thanks Piotr for your awesome work. Thank you. Um, is new Hanami working with non MRI Ruby? Um, that's a tricky question, especially now we just like disabled JRuby builds in a bunch of driver B repositories. It's a temporary so the, not solution, a temporary situation because JRuby isn't really compatible with uh, Ruby 2.6, like not fully compatible. Uh, so we just turn it off. Um, right now, with the team that we have and the, the time that we don't have, uh, I don't think it's reasonable to expect like official support for JRuby and Truffle. Um, one thing I want to do is, is enable a separate build for JRuby and Truffle just to have it running. Um, but it will not be part of like the, the actual CI that we have and it will not uh, like block releases or, or any kind of development. It will be like just a reference to, to see if, if the builds are passing. Um, ROM RB, uh, the entire spec suite passes on Truffle, so and on JRuby as well. So I think that it should just work. But again, it's it's very hard to support JRuby and Truffle because every time there is a problem and there are problems uh, with these implementations on a regular basis, 
every every time it happens, it, it, it's really time consuming to figure out um, what the problem is and how to fix it. Is it a bug in our code? Is it a bug in, in the implementation of the language? Which is quite often the case. So yeah, it's just hard. Personally, I, I would love to support both jQuery and Truffle because I'm just excited about multi-threading possibilities there. But yeah, it's just hard. So, uh, I scrolled too far. Uh, the next question is from Ernest. Um, what is the minimum Ruby version required for using Hanami? Uh, in, general, in general, we support all the current Ruby versions. So right now it's 2.6 plus. And that's like the general um, policy that we should probably publish somewhere. Um, yeah, it's just, it matches currently supported Rubies. So the next question is from uh, Stoivo. Uh, I would like to start an app in Hanami 2 today. Where do I start? Uh, with the template. I will link to the template. It's, it's, it's just a GitHub repository uh, that you clone. Uh, it's got an installation script that will like rename the, the default template name to your application name and it's a starting point but it's it's based on like the latest stuff not from git but like the latest alpha um so that's a starting point and then there are people thanking me so thank you for uh, joining me and here's a question from Yuri. Um, do you have some plans on built-in background processing something like Sidekick? Uh, no, no, I mean there's Sidekick uh, or Q which I used recently and I really like it so not really. At least not now. I don't. I don't see any any needs for something new. But yeah, we will see. Uh, the next question from Stoivo. Uh, you said there were uh, an application template, but where is it? I will link to it. I will link to it. Uh, you will. You will get a bunch of information in 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 an email uh, from the organizers after the talk. So I will make sure that it includes. Uh, as much info as possible. Um, the next question is from Ali. Uh, what is the difference between Rails engines and slices? Um, yeah, well, that, that, that could be like a talk on its own. Um, so in, in, in a nutshell, uh, a slice is much more isolated from, from from the rest of the app. Um, engines, at least the last time I checked, um, engines were still kind of coupled to, to certain parts of Rails. Um, and they were just not reusable as much as slices are. Um, and also slices are like, a very simple way of encapsulating a smaller piece. I mean, it shouldn't have to be small, it can be quite big, but just a piece of your application, but also um, to reuse shared implementation and um, shared abstractions between slices. It's very easy to like reuse things between um, between slices without the tight, tight coupling uh, that you would typically have. Um, but yeah. I would have to like really think through the answer. I should probably do it sometime. Sorry, I, I, I cannot explain this properly, especially that I haven't looked at Rails engines and, and the way they, they are implemented these days. Like the last time I checked it was like Rails 4. Um, yeah. I guess one thing I can say is that with slices, it's, it's actually possible to like just take a slice and copy it to a new directory and and now you have a standalone app or at least that's the goal um so yeah 
I don't think you can do it with 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 a Rails engine. So the next question is from Slava. Uh, thanks so much for your work, Piotr. Thank you. Um, should applications be prepared somehow for shifting from Hanami 1.3? Uh, to 2.0. Uh, that's a tough one. Um, it really depends on on, an, on on the application. I mean, there's like no answer to this question. It just depends on the app. So it depends like if you use ROM, or if you use Hanami model, if you use something else. Um, but yeah, actions are different. Yeah, there, there are a lot of differences. So yeah, it's, it's it really depends on how you build uh, a Hanami One app. So next question from Ernest: How can one start contributing to the development? I answered that question. Wait. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I answered both questions about the minimum Ruby version and how you can start contributing. So uh, the next question from Vitaly. Uh, thanks, Piot. That was great. Thank you. Um, are there any build a web blog like guides planned for Hanami 2.0 release? How do you plan to involve new people to Hanami community? Um, yes. So we have the bookshelf example app that is rewritten to Hanami 2.0, but it's not public yet. Uh, I would have to check um, if we could finally pub publish it. Uh, and there will be like the entire guide that we already have for Hanami 1. Point something. It's, it's going to be updated to Hanami 2.0 when like the entire process will, will be explained. Um, so, yeah, the question, uh, the answer is yes, but it's not a blog, it's a bookshelf app. I think it's the, like the original uh, sample app that was used in, uh, in the, the original Rails book. Right, uh, so the, the, ne the, the, the next question was, how do you plan to involve new people to Hanami community? Um, just help however you can and and that's pretty much it um like whenever people see something that is exciting to them it's it's a, just a great opportunity to like get involved um so yeah i don't think there's like a specific plan for that to be honest i think it should be like natural uh, next question from Ivan. Uh, what is the idea behind big changes in actions? They are not callable anymore and mutate input argument. That's a good question. Um, I don't know. I haven't implemented that part. Uh, it's something that uh, I, I believe Tim would be able to answer. Um, I remember that there were some um, performance related concerns when it comes to mutating uh, or not mutating. Uh, response um, and I think handle method was used instead of call in order to uh, have like a place for certain just automation and, 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 and certain uh, um, just conveniences so that you won't have to do things manually and we just didn't have a good place for it. So it had to be called. So then your own method should be handled. Uh, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not a good person to, to um, answer that because I haven't worked on this part. Uh, the next question from Ivan, do you still, <laughs> do, you still uh, yeah, do you still ride on a bike? Because uh, I see it <laughs> like from, from all the way along. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do, but yeah, I've been I've been quite busy recently, so uh, I've been writing a little bit less. Uh, thanks for your answer, Piotr. 
Thanks for the question. Um, another question from Irnes. You spoke about performance. Have you done any benchmarking between Hanami and Rails 6? Uh, I, I haven't done any benchmarks yet. Um, so far, I, I've, I've been working on my own app and it's pretty fast. I don't, like I'm not concerned about performance yet. Uh, when it comes to my app at least, but we will definitely work on some benchmarks um, and just publish results. Um, there, there is also this project on GitHub that I think it, it includes a bunch of different benchmarks for a lot of different frameworks across different uh, technology stacks and, and some comparisons. Uh, and, and, and it used to include Hanami. I'm not sure if it includes the latest version. I mean, the, the unreleased uh, 2.0 version, uh, probably not. But yeah, we could probably look into updating it there. Um, the next question is from Alexi. Uh, I saw that one Hanami's goal is speed. How much faster than Rails if we compare same functionality? I mean, one controller that's doing the same thing. Um, uh, I, I don't know. It's, it, it's really, it's really hard to compare. Like, like I said, we will have some benchmarks because people like benchmarks, so we will have them. Uh, but I always, always say when it comes to benchmarks, it's really difficult to compare um, different different libraries, and especially when it comes to frameworks, which are just complex by definition. So, for example, I, I've seen some benchmarks. Uh, and I think it was specifically Hanami one point something with with Hanami model, where the way the the way the benchmark was written was just so bad in terms of performance that it was like multiple times slower than what it could be. So again, it, it it's it's tricky. Like you really need to know how to write a benchmark. You really need to know the tool that you are benchmarking, um, because there are differences and sometimes differences are huge depending on how exactly you did something. Uh, but I suspect that in most cases, Hanami should be faster if you use ROM because ROM is faster than active record typically. So there's that. Um, another question from Ingor. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, the great job, Piotr. Thank you. I'm also very excited about live view. Yes, it's exciting. Uh, have you already checked Rails Hotwire? Do you believe that this front end less approach can be used in a big amount of applications? Uh, I've seen, like literally, I've seen Hotwire. I haven't used it, um, so I don't have much to say. Um, I think that this approach can become popular because in many cases you can really have a nice responsive uh, uh, user interface without the added complexity of a, um, a single page app and all the frameworks that are required to build them. So I think it could become a thing. Um, that's why I'm excited. And I also like, I don't always want to build an SBA I, sometimes I need some kind of a dynamic behavior in, in the UI without actually using React or something. So, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not alone here. So, yeah. Uh, another question from you asked, uh, is Slice alternative to scope namespace constraint in, in Rails? Uh, oh, no, sorry, no, it's not. It's, 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 it's a way of, of mounting a sub application at a certain path. So if you have, uh, let's say, um, I don't know, a blog, <laughs> uh, a blog with, uh, with, with like administration panel and a public facing part that displays posts and all this stuff, then you could have two slices. One would be mounted at uh, slash admin and the other one would be mounted at the root and they would act as separate apps even though they are part of the same code base. Um, so that's how slices work. So. And the slice helper in the in the routing is just that. Um, another question from Ivan. I see a real benefit of generators of code. Is it a case at some point to have generators as a first class citizen Hanami, same level where entities repositories views generate? Yes, 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 for sure. 
Um, there's a lot that we can do to just streamline the entire development process with generators. I'm a big fan. I'm not a huge fan of very complex scaffolding, to be honest. Uh, I've seen really terrible code bases because of scaffolding. Um, what typically happens, at least in my experience, is that people generate a lot of code and they barely change it. Um, or they change it by adding a lot of stuff without realizing that the scaffolding was just a scaffolding. So um, we should be careful with that. But in general, generators are extremely, extremely useful. So for sure. Uh, I also have some some ambitious ideas uh, when it comes to like integrating Hanami uh, in, in in code editors. Like I use Visual Studio Code, so I would love to like at least try to build an integration for Hanami so that um, you could have things like your application visualization, like literally an image, a graph generated. Uh, using the API, API that we have, which is totally possible. We actually have a tool to do just that. Uh, so there are a lot of cool things that we could do with um, like code generators and things built on top of the existing APIs to improve uh, development experience in general. There's a lot that still can be done, really. So yeah. That was the last question, at least in the written form. Um, so thank you, um, how do we proceed? Yeah, thank all of you guys. Maybe you have uh, maybe you have more questions, but I just cannot imagine how it can be more. <laughs> thank you so much for such an active participant. My so. pleasure. So guys, seems like no more questions, yes? Yeah, no one wants to unmute microphone as well. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for such an active participant. I, I have, oh my God, it seems like one of the most active webinar that I remember. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Piotr, for your time and for readiness to share your experience. I'm sure it was very useful for all of the participants. And of course, we'll share uh, videos and presentation and all of the links that you need. Uh, I hope to do this tomorrow, but I'm not sure, maybe on Tuesday. So, but of course you will receive it. Thank you so much, guys. Piotr, you were just our star today. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Ah, bye.